smoking food and canning food are the two biggest things. It's guys, Native Americans, people around the world, people in, in, in the Middle East now, in desert deserts, and guys, they survive <clears throat> on smoked meat. Okay, so what you do, take your meat, you want to slice it as thin as possible. It doesn't matter how long it is, but it needs to be super, super thin, as thin as you can possibly get it. If you need to pair, te pair, uh, tear it apart with your teeth, do that. Then what you need to do is find a way to suspend it over a fire, okay? Many ways to do that. We have a video on tripods. That would be an easy way to do it, would be set up a tripod. But you, what you can do is set up a tripod with, with, with sticks, and then, um, and then uh, you set up a grill with sticks as well, to literally just get straight sticks, and you can set up a grill. Um, think about framing it, stuff like that, using anything, shoelaces, whatever, to, to, to tie it all up. And, um, and uh, or you might just have to kind of hang it, kind of like you would hang clothes on, a, uh, like you would throw, throw clothes over a rope to dry it. Well, you could do the same thing. You could, you could throw meat over a, a fire on a stick, okay? Um, and what you're looking for in terms of heat and elevation is you want to be able to put your hand over and feel the heat and it's warm, but it's not gonna burn your hand, okay? If you can do that, and, and right where that meat is, you feel it and, and it's warm. Like it's, you can feel it, it's warm. Like it's not gonna burn you, but it's warm. And you could leave your hand there for like 10 minutes and it wouldn't burn. That's about the right temperature to smoke. You need to be within, you know, 20, 30, <coughs> 40, you know, I would say 30% of the proper heat range. It doesn't matter. You're not gonna have, you know, a digital thing. I'm telling you the way to do it and the way that Indians and everyone did it for, the, for thousands of generations, guys, is exactly what I just told you, okay? Um, and the more sophisticated you get, you'll figure out more stick systems and whatever to do it. But you wanna leave that on there for a long time until it's completely hardened, it's not soft, and it feels like jerky, like beef jerky. And I'm not talking about the soup. I'm not talking about, you know, the, the super soft, genuine, you know, <laughs> beef jerky that has all this fat and sugar. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like that crunchy, nasty one that you don't like when you get it. Like, oh man, it's hard. I'm telling you, that is the consistency you want. You know it's dried out. That thing will last you forever. I mean, I don't know how long, but it, God, it'll last you months probably as long as you have it wrapped up. And you could take a whole deer, a whole animal, whole whatever, and take off all the meat and smoke it and be fine, okay? Canning, I'm not gonna go into that, but it's not that hard. You get canning supplies in a boiling pot. Uh, to do it and you need some tongs but you could you could make shift that out of wood or whatever uh, sticks or whatever and um, and you need to be able to boil those um, those jars and uh, it's that's actually a very simple process once you have it but just look up how to do that as well that's so smoking and canning is easy um, the other thing is uh, that, that that we're doing it's an active thing that we're working on right now is setting up hydroponics okay hydroponics is a awesome way to do gardening um, so you have your protein, your stuff like that. And now you need something else, right? So uh, gardening would be the best. But the problem is gardening outside, depending on where you are. I'm in Texas, like, you know, you need fertilizer and all kinds of stuff. And you need to keep the rabbits and the deer and all this stuff away. Uh, and that's just not going to happen most likely. So hydroponics is a way to do it indoors. It's super inexpensive. It's super easy to do. It involves water. There's no, there's no soil. Uh, and it is the absolute best way to do it. You can look it up. There's a million uh, plays, uh, ways to do it. But basically all you need is a like a Rubbermaid uh, container. The shallower, the better. Only don't, the shallower, the better. Just so sure you're dealing with less water. But if you've got a giant one, it doesn't matter. Uh, you put the lid on there, poke holes in the lid. And there's a way to suspend the, the food in there. And it grows. And you have an endless supply of of uh, vegetables. Now, the downside is you're not going to get, you know, big things out of there. Um, you can't do everything, but you can get enough to survive and you can get some pretty darn good vegetables. So that's hydroponics, okay? Um, the other thing I would do is I would, one of these books back here, uh, I would get one or two survival books that deal with um, edible plants. So if you go on Amazon, look up edible plants book. There's one that's like the bestseller. It's it's green. I think it's green. And uh, it is by far the bestseller. And we have two of them. And uh, I'm telling you, this kind of knowledge could save your life or keep you alive for a long time, okay? Uh, or keep you from living, staying out of the government line. Uh, so, um, so anyway, I would have that because at least you'll be able to look and read and go, okay, that plant I can go eat. That plant I can go eat, right? If I wanna eat this one, I need this much water, that kind of stuff. So even though you may not know it, you could learn it in a time of need. 
um, by the way, if you're going to buy a book, I would also buy a, um, uh, a medical one as well. So a medical survival book or a medical prepper book, we, we have a couple of those. And like I said, somebody breaks their arm, somebody gets the flu, whatever, sore throat, like it would be nice to know what kind of medicine, what kind of leaves, what kind of mud, you know, those kind of things can I use. 